I'm so sorry, Angela. God, this... this is a nightmare. What am I going to do? If it helps Mike had life insurance through the LMS, I will personally see to it that you're compensated. Thank you. Oh, I can't believe this. How am I going to tell the boys? Tell us what? Robbie! Hello, darling. You remember Mr. Zorro, right? Um, yeah. Good afternoon, Mr. Zorro. Hello, Robert. How are you? Better than Sean. He got held back after school for starting another fight. Christ almighty, that's all I need. What do you mean? What's wrong, Mum? Why is Mr. Zorro here? Where's Dad? They found her? So it seems. The police reckon she was strangled. I'm sure my Uncle Greg has something to do with it. Did he ever say anything? No. The one time I asked about Aunt Rita, he broke a beer bottle over my head. And when my brother asked, let's just say I got off easy. I'm sorry to hear. Hopefully he'll be brought to justice. He already was. Someone shot him outside his house five years ago. They never found his killer, and I hope they never do. He had it coming. Did you know my aunt? I'm afraid not. I didn't even know she disappeared until Edward mentioned it recently. You might want to ask him about her, though. All right, I will. I hope he can tell me something. I barely remember her, but I like to think she was a kind woman. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to burden you with my problems. How have you been feeling, Donald? Since you cleaned out my firebox, great. What about you, Barry? Any issues? Not any more, thanks. Well, let me know if that changes. I have to go. They're holding a memorial for my aunt later today. And I thought I'd been dealt a bad hand. Can you imagine being raised by someone who might have killed a family member? No, and I don't want- Oh, bother! What's wrong? I meant to ask him about his father, but forgot. You mean Michael? Wait, what? How do you know him? I don't, but Rob told me a bit about him when I was being restored. He didn't say much other than he was killed in an accident, so now might not have been the best time to ask questions. Good call, laddie. Good call. What happened, Peter? Nothing, sir. I was just a little short on steam. That's the third time this month. I'm sorry, sir. I've just been feeling run down lately. I don't know why. I think the problem might be your workload. Since your return, most of the trains you've pulled have been fuel deliveries. I know that's why you were brought back, but constantly hauling such heavy trains over a distance might be signed to take its toll. Maybe, sir. If that's the case, what can we do? Well, I can assign some of your colleagues to handle the fuel trains for a while and put you on lighter duties. And I know just the thing. I was reviewing your record and discovered something interesting. You're the only engine on Sodor that's never pulled coaches. You cannot be serious! I beg your pardon, Francis. I apologize for being so blunt, Sir Topham, but do you really think it's appropriate to assign someone with his background to passenger duties? If you had asked me that a year ago, I would have said no, but it's apparently what the people want. It is, sir? Yes, you're quite the popular attraction among rail enthusiasts. I've had many, many inquiries asking if you can run an excursion or two. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I will charter a special train for you to pull. What will it be called, sir? The War Crimes Express? Change of plans. Francis shall handle the fuel trains exclusively for the next week. And if you open your mouth again, I'll double it. So, Peter, are you interested? Yes, sir, I am. Thank you. How are you feeling, Peter? Better than him. Don't act so smug, Peter. All this proves is people are willing to turn a blind eye when it suits them, which is nothing short of disgraceful, disgusting, and despic- Don't you dare. Oh, fine. No need to be so proprietary. And no need to be such a pillock about all this. I know what I did, Francis. I'm not proud of it, and I did my time. Why are you taking this so personally? Because I met one of your victims. What? When? You better not be having me on. 
I'm not. When I was at Barrow the other day, I was approached by a gentleman from Germany. He wanted to know if you were the St. Peter that fought in the war. I told him yes. He then said when he was a boy, his family took refuge in the hospital you destroyed. Did... did he mention his name? Luther von Huss. Oh, Jesus. You know who that is? Yeah, while I was at Railgate, I made sure to memorize the names of the people I killed or injured. I remember Karl, Frieda, and Olga von Huss. Karl was one of the soldiers who occupied the hospital. As for Luther, he was nine years old at the time. He was pulled out of the rubble with a broken leg. That explains his limp. Did he say what he was going to do? No, but I suspect he wants to confront Peter. So you best prepare yourself for an unpleasant conversation. Don't worry, I've had plenty of experience from talking to you. Cool. The sheer audacity of that brute pot calling the kettle spam can. Very droll, Gordon. I don't understand. I always thought it would take more than three bullets to kill an engine. It might have, sir, if not for his metal fatigue. What? He had metal fatigue? Yes, sir. We discovered it during the autopsy. It was rather mild, but it would have impacted his performance. The bullets hit him in exactly the right spot. Or the wrong spot, as the case may... Mr. Hall? Hello, Topham. Good afternoon, Nigel. Thank you for coming. Thank you for letting me be here. <sighs> Poor Peter. Hadn't he suffered enough? I doubt his killer thought that. How the hell was he able to smuggle a gun into the country? What monkeys do we have watching the border? Rest in peace, old friend. Amen. Nigel, allow me to introduce Mr. Robert Hall, Superintendent of Crovens Gate. Mr. Hall, this is Nigel Zorro, former director of LMS Soto Operations. I'm sorry, have we met? Yes, though I was a child at the time. My father worked for you. Is that so? What was his name?
You said we would be compensated. You said you would look into it personally. And by doing so, I've discovered some troubling discrepancies in our finances. These need to be sorted out before we can make any payment to your family. How long would that take? Maybe a month? We can't wait that long. We're already behind on bills and the mortgage. We're in danger of losing the house. I'm sorry, but we need to sort out these issues. Perhaps there wouldn't be any if you didn't dip your hand in the till. I beg your pardon. Mike told me about some of your dealings. I'm sure the papers will be very interested to hear you've been embezzling from the railway. And our lawyers will be very interested in suing you for slander. Are you prepared to take on the full might of the LMS? Didn't think so. You'll get your money. Or you won't. I guess you'll have to wait and see. God, this is... surreal. More like bollocks. The man survived the Western Front, he survived the Blitz, he survived bloody cancer, only to get gunned down by some mongrel. Maybe the Jerry that snuffed Peter escaped and went on a rampage. I said the same thing to the coppers at the scene. They said he's still in custody and will likely spend the rest of his life in prison. Good riddance, I say. I'll second that. <sighs> Fizzling fireboxes. First Jeffrey, then Peter, now Mr. Zorro. They say bad luck comes in threes. I'm praying this means it's over. <laughs> 